All right, question 25 of the 2019 chemistry exam. So this one is an equilibrium question because it's got this beautiful looking graph here. So what are we looking at here? The following concentration refers to the gas as this five liter container. At T1, the mixture is heated. So if you heat something, equilibrium says it's gonna favor the endothermic reaction. So what's happening here is the fact that we have Q and plus R is going down. Both of these are going down, so that suggests that they're reactants. They're forming P, and this is going to be endothermic reaction. Now, I've got the ratios here, so therefore this is going up by um, the same amount as that, and Q is going down by 2, so it's going to be 2Q plus R forms P as endothermic. The question is, which one of these represents this? So therefore, do we have 2R, 2Q plus R? We've got Q, no, so it can't be that one. 2Q plus R forms P, and that's exothermic. That's not right, though, because it's not exothermic. It has to be endothermic, because this is favoured. So how else can we look at this? We can say it's going the other way around. So P forming R and 2Q is endothermic, so the reverse reaction here is exothermic. So therefore, that would suggest A is right. So I'm thinking it's A. This one can't be right, because Q and R have to be on the same side. We can't have that. And Q and R, again, have to be on the same side. It can't be that one. The idea is that if they are going, ah, sorry, if they are going in the same direction, they have to be on the same side of the reaction. So therefore, Q and R must be on one side of the reaction, and then P has to be on the other side of the reaction. So therefore, that's why you're going to cross out B and D completely here. Question 26. Now, I haven't got a calculator, but I'm going to write down all the calculations, and I'll come back and actually work out what that actually is once I get myself a calculator. So, first of all, we are doing a um, calibration factor of a bomb calorimeter by connecting the calorimeter to a power supply. So, therefore, we are looking at that. Experimental heat of combustion of pure sucrose is this. All right, so I need to find out a calibration factor, then use that to find out um, the heat of combustion. Lots of calculation for a multiple choice question, but not to worry, we got CF equals VIT over delta T. So therefore, um, my energy is provided by my volts, my amps, and my um, time. So therefore, it's 6.5 times 3.6 times 4. That's going to be divided by my temperature change, which is 0 0.48. I can't do this without a calculator, but that would be my calibration factor. I'll work that out. My energy produced from my sucrose would be energy produced by sucrose would be equal to my calibration factor times my temperature change in my experiment. So therefore, my calibration factor here would be that times by whatever the difference is between these two numbers, which looks to be uh, 6.2 times 6.2. So I'd work that out, and that would give me my energy produced from my sucrose. And then if I want to go um, joules per gram, I'll take energy divided by grams. So I'll take whatever number I have here, divide it by my 4.2 grams, and I would then be able to work out what my heat of combustion will be. Now, I'm, as I said, I'm going to come back to this at the end with a calculator and work out what the actual answer is. But clearly setting out as to calibration factor, that's then experimental energy released from my sucrose and then energy per gram of my sucrose. Now remember, with this, VIT comes out in joules, so I don't need to convert anything to kilojoules here because I need kilojoules, so I need just joules per gram. So that's something to note there. Question 27. An organic compound has a molar mass of that. Um, which of the following is going to produce four distinct peaks in carbon NMR? So, first of all, we just need to draw these out and work out which one has four particular peaks. Um, they are all the same because I can... S actually, no, they're not all the same. So, um, butanol would have four distinct peaks. All right. Two methyl butanol would, because if it's that, you have a methanol there. These two would be in the same environment. Um, two methyl butanol would as well. Let's have a look. C to C to C to C to OH to C. That looks like it should have four distinct peaks, I think. One here, one here, one here, and one here. That's good. That's going to have four distinct peaks as well. Um, and let's go with the last one. C to C to C 
to C and propane one all. So you have distinct peak here, that's only gonna be three. All right, so is most likely from these particular ones here. Um, I'll need to work out what my molar masses of these would be as well. So my molar masses here would be, um, we got one, two, three, four, five carbons. Five carbons equals 60 molar mass. Um, I would have an oxygen, which would make it 72, sorry, 76 would be with my oxygen. How many hydrogens would I have here? I would have three hydrogens, three hydrogens, that's six hydrogens, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Hydrogens would be 12. So therefore, I'm gonna end up here with 88. So therefore, it has to be, cannot be this one. This is only gonna have three distinct peaks here. Cannot be that one. So what's the difference between 2-methylbutan-1-ol and 2-methylbutan-2-ol? Well, three distinct, four distinct peaks in um, carbon NMR. It has to be one of these two. Um, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Ah, you know what? I did it wrong. That's not that. that. One, two, three, four. Butan 2 ol and my 2 methyl would have to come off that. And then my butan 1 ol OH, my carbon will have to come off that. So now this guy, here, I just drew them over there, but this guy here, because um, what I've done wrong is I've put my OH at the end and I've put my methyls here. I have not drawn these properly. So here, now, this guy, all these would be unique. So that's gonna be five different, um, what are they called? carbon environments, whereas this one is going to have your four, so it's therefore it's going to be butan 2 ol 2 methyl butan 2 ol is C. Alrighty, that makes sense. Now the main thing, yeah, need to draw my structures properly. Really be careful of that. Moving on. Alright, question 28. The concentration of all gases in the equilibrium reaction is 0.1 molar. Okay, which reaction has a Kc of 1 molar um, to the negative 2? So first of all, I need to look at which one units are going to give me that. So remember, it is reactant, sorry, products over reactants to the coefficients. So what I need to do is have at least two extra reactants than we do products because we have to have ended up with two on the bottom there. All right. So therefore, let's have a look at this. This has only um, one extra reactant than product. So therefore, that would be end up with molar negative one. This one has exactly the same reactant, so therefore this unit would be zero. This guy has four reactants and two there, so that's gonna be molar to the negative two. This guy has three reactants and that, so therefore it has to be B, because I'm caring about my unit. Main thing is, um, if all these concentrations are one, everything's gonna cancel out to being one here regardless. So therefore I need to care for all with my units as to what my concentration, what my equilibrium constant will be. Moving on to question 29. And we have some information um, about vitamin C, we've got a reaction, looks like we're doing a titration. Fantastic. So let's have a look at what we need to do. Um, which of the following errors would result in an underestimation of the concentration of grape vitamin C in the grapefruit juice? Well. What are we doing here? 19 mil of deionized That's not going to affect it. Adding deionized water to the conical flask will not affect it whatsoever. All right. Um, you should know that you can actually rinse things in the conical flask. You're not measuring anything in the conical flask, so you're fine with that. The concentration of I2 was actually this much. So what am I doing? If I have, is this higher or lower? This is a lower concentration. Okay, so if I have a lower concentration of I2, I would need to use more of it to react. I'm putting, I'm putting it in the wrong area. So this is a lower concentration of my iodine. So if I had a lower concentration of my iodine, I would need more of it to react my um, vitamin C. 
So therefore, it would look like I had more vitamin C. It's not an underestimation, it's actually an overestimation for that. The initial volume of I2 solution in the burette was 0.5 mil instead of point, but it was read as 2.5 mil. All right, so what does that mean? If it was read differently, Alrighty. Okay, if it was read differently, um, am I going to be looking like I'm adding more or less? Because what we want to say is, if I want to underestimate my concentration of vitamin C, it means I need to use less I2. So initial volume was that. It was read as that, so I would be writing down that I would use less I2. So that suggests I'm using less I2 that I actually am. C is looking pretty good for now. All right, then I'm going to go on to D. The balance was faulty and the measured, the mass of grapefruit juice was lower than the actual mass. All right, so if my measured mass of grapefruit juice was lower than the actual mass, I'm getting, for instance, my percentage. All right, my percentage equals um, got over total. And my total is my measured mass of grapefruit juice. So if that's actually lower, okay, that means it's gonna end up with a, a higher percentage. So it's not gonna be that either. So it's gonna be C. Um, that's some working through. I'm gonna try to work through as quickly as I possibly can. But um, yeah, each one of these, you just need to follow through what calculation happened. With errors, there's no hard and fast rule you need to Think about what does this do to my reaction, what does this do to my reaction, so on and so forth. Lastly, I think I need a calculator for this one as well, but um, question 30, if the mass measured mass of grapefruit was this much and my average title was that much, how much would the, what the measured percentage would be in that? So therefore I need to do some calculations. So what I need to know to work out is my number of iodine, so number of moles of iodine in my titer. Okay, that's going to be 0.0215, which is volume times my concentration, which is a very small number, which is over here, um, 9.365 times 10 to the power of negative four, and that's gonna be my number of moles of iodine. That equals my number of moles, because it's a one-to-one -one ratio of um, vitamin C. Okay, so therefore I can get, look to see if I did any dilution here. Um, use a measuring cylinder, measure out five mils of grapefruit juice, weigh it, so that's fine. I didn't dilute that at all. Yeah, I didn't dilute that at all, so that's fine. So therefore I can work out, if I know my number of moles of vitamin C, I can work out my mass of vitamin C equals um, number of moles times molar mass. Do I have a molar mass of vitamin C? I do, it's given to me here already. So therefore I can work out that that's gonna be times by 176, 176. That's gonna be my mass of vitamin C. I then get my percentage by going my um, got over total, which equals uh, my got is my mass here, which I'll put into there. And then I'll go through with a calculator in a second and just go through these ones. Divided by 4.9 times 100, and that's gonna give me a number, and I am then going to work that out here. I need to go on, do my yard duty now, and then I'll come back with a calculator and finish this off. Okay, so I'm back from yard duty. I've got my calculator, so let's go and smash out these last calculations here. Good thing is, I've written all my calculations down, so I don't need to do much work from now once I've got my calculator working. So, on, I first of all need to do my C, sorry, my, Energy um, and find my calibration factor. So 6.5 times 3.6 times 4 divided by 0.848 equals that. Times that by 6.2 gives me a number. And then I then need to work out my energy divided by my 4.2. So divide that by 4.2 gives me 287, which is not an answer. Great. So why did that happen? What have I done wrong here? I've got Volts is six, three is amps, and four is my time, but that's in minutes, so I have to times up by a second, so times by 60. Good thing is, um, this is all multiply, multiply and divide, so therefore if I just do that and times that by 60, I should get an answer that's reasonable, and it is 17,000, which is C. So therefore, that's my answer there. 
Fantastic, um, really important. Again, by writing everything down, you can then check where you're going wrong um, and so on and so forth. If you get an answer that's not actually right. Helpful. All right, where was my other one that I needed to do? No, 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 and it is here, my titration question. So again, clear, clear, clear. Let's go through this process. So 0.0215 times 9.367 times 10 to the power of negative four gives me my number of moles of iodine. That is was ratio to my vitamin C again, so that was a one to one ratio, so that's the same there. Times that by my molar mass of my vitamin C, and remember sometimes they give you the molar mass, so it's nice to remember that. So times that by 176, uh, silence my phone alarm, um, that equals that number here for my mass of vitamin C. Then I wanted my percentage, so therefore I take my mass of vitamin C, divide it by how much grape juice I had, which I believe, to make sure it's 4.9, 4.9, gives me that times 100%, gives me answer of B. And therefore I've gone and, gone and done my calculation pretty quickly because I have written down what my plan was. And that's why it's important to write down what calculations you're actually gonna do. And that's it. Hopefully that's helped you and I'll start looking at the short answer.